there was a moment where you had some hesitation about Epstein releasing some of the documents on Epstein. Why the hesitation? I don't think I had, I mean, I'm not involved. I never went to his island, um, fortunately. But a lot of people did. Why do you think so many smart, powerful people allowed him to get so close? Um, he was a good salesman. He was, you know, he was a hale and hearty type of guy. He had some nice assets that he'd throw around, like islands. But a lot of big people went to that island. But fortunately, I was not one of them. It's just very strange for a lot of people that uh, the list of clients that went to the island has not been made public. Yeah, it's it's very interesting, isn't it? Probably will be, by the way. Probably. So if you're able to, you'll be... Yeah, I'd certainly take a look at it. Now, Kennedy's interesting because it's so many years ago. You know, they do that for danger, too, because, you know, it endangers certain people, et cetera, et cetera. So Kennedy... Uh, is very different from the Epstein thing. But yeah, I'd be inclined to do the Epstein. I'd have no problem with it. You just watched Donald Trump's soul leave his body when podcaster Lex Friedman asked him about Jeffrey Epstein's client list. And as you saw, he was pretty uncomfortable taking that question. He was being weird, and I think he was acting awkward, which is so bizarre because Donald Trump, as we all know, is perfectly innocent. It's not like he's ever been accused of sexual misconduct by dozens of women or found liable for rape in court. And most importantly, he definitely doesn't have a connection to Jeffrey Epstein. So why has he been hesitant, as Lex put it, about releasing Epstein's list to the public? It's just a little bit strange, right? Now, I'm sure that we're definitely going to get to the bottom of this when he's elected. I'm sure we can count on that list for sure when he gets in office. But on a serious note, I cannot, I cannot tell you how much I love the fact that he just threw RFK Jr. under the bus. That shit is so hilarious to me. And he thinks that it doesn't make him look more suspicious, but it does. If Jeffrey Epstein comes up and you immediately try to change the subject and talk about RFK's connection, I'm sorry, man, you look a little bit sus. And he should feel awkward and look sus because he is sus. But look, to be fair, he's not wrong about RFK either because, uh, you know, he was also conspicuously friendly with this serial child predator. You weren't ever on Jeffrey Epstein's jet, were you? Uh, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet two times. My wife had some kind of relationship with Glenn Maxwell. You know your behavior is suspicious when the Fox News host, who admitted that he creepily let the air out of his female co-worker's tires so he could give her a ride home to hit on her, is shocked by your confession there. But I don't want to focus too much on RFK Jr. because that's what he wants us to do, but I had to show you that clip because it's funny. But I do want to get back to Trump because I've got to say, I wish that Lex would have stayed on this subject a little bit longer and made him sweat more because he deserves to squirm. Because joking aside, this man is a rapist. Donald Trump is a rapist. We don't have to say alleged. This issue has been adjudicated. He is a rapist. And to be clear, we don't know many of the details about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. But what we do know is that he was very close to him for many years. And he was also close to Ghislaine Maxwell, too. But don't take it from me. Let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Ghislaine Maxwell is in prison. And so a lot of people want to know if she's going to turn in powerful people. And I know you've talked in the past about Prince Andrew and uh, you've criticized Bill Clinton's behavior. I'm wondering, uh, do you feel that she's going to turn in powerful men? How do you see that working out? I don't know. I haven't really been following it too much. I just wish her well, frankly. Uh, I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach, and I guess they lived in Palm Beach. Uh, but I wish her well. You've met her numerous times over the years. Have you now? Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Also, you wish her well. Also, very, very interesting. See, I just don't understand why you would wish a sex trafficker well, unless you really developed a strong bond with them, enough to know them personally. That's just weird. And then to say that publicly, also very, very weird. And I love how Trump will talk about Bill Clinton and Prince Andrew and now RFK Jr., rightfully so, by the way, but pretend like he wasn't oogling women with Epstein on video. 
who pretend like the photographs of him and Epstein don't exist, we've all seen them, right? And look, I'm fair. Investigate all of these creeps, and if they're found guilty, they can all share a jail cell as far as I'm concerned. But if you actually think that Trump is going to release the Epstein files that would possibly implicate himself further, I've got a bridge to sell you. There's a reason why he's very awkward and fidgety whenever this issue comes up. But of course, his supporters are stupid enough to believe him. For example, DC Drano, one of the largest pro-Trump accounts on Twitter with 1.7 million followers, shared the video that we just watched and responded saying, whoa, Trump plans to release the Jeffrey Epstein client list. Now you know why he was almost assassinated. The most powerful evil people in America will do anything to stop the truth from coming out. He was on the fucking list, you simple bitch. But a bunch of pro-Trump NPCs echo the same sentiment in the reply saying this is why they're trying to stop him and the truth will always come out and oh the cia isn't gonna like this and on top of that some dipshit took the time to share an image with biden walls harris pelosi and others and jeffrey epstein and the only person in this photo who was actually associated with epstein was Bill Clinton. Nobody else has a connection with Jeffrey Epstein, which is why you had to Photoshop them in, but you don't have to Photoshop pictures of Trump and Epstein together because those pictures are real. So you have to remember that we are not dealing with the brightest bulbs here. They will accept whatever Donald Trump tells them. If he tells them to deny their lying eyes and forget about the photographs of him and Epstein altogether, pretend like they didn't see them when we all know that they did, They'll do it like good little sheep because that's what they do. We're talking about NPCs here. But I do want to talk about some other parts of this interview because it was an hour long and Trump ended up talking a little bit too much and admitted things that he probably shouldn't admit. Case in point. Whenever we use terms like communism for her, and I don't know if you know this, but some people call you a fascist. Yeah, they do. So I figure it's all right to call them a communist. Yeah, they call me a lot worse than I call them. They, they do indeed. Uh, it's just sometimes... It's interesting, though. They'll call me something that's terrible, and then I'll hit them back. And they'll say, isn't it terrible what Trump said? I said, well, wait a minute. They just called me. So I believe you have to fight fire with fire. So he's admitting that he doesn't actually believe Kamala Harris is a communist, not that he knows what a communist is in the first place, but that right there is an admission that he's only calling her a communist because he's mad that Democrats are calling him a fascist. But communist and fascist aren't subjective labels like poopy head or idiot. These are words with actual definitions. And it's just objectively true that Kamala Harris is not a communist, unfortunately. No sitting Democrat is a communist. However, it is true that Trump is a fascist. He meets the criteria for fascism, ranging from authoritarianism to his us versus them rhetoric. It is undeniable that he is a fascist. But it's not surprising that he's been lying about Kamala Harris being a communist because he lies about everything. If he's opening his mouth, you can, you know, assume he's lying because he's just always fucking lying because he is impulsively dishonest. But there's one more moment that I do want to share from this interview. So Lex Friedman asks him about his election denialism and what he would say to independents who are turned off by that rhetoric. Take a guess as to uh, what he's going to say to assuage their concerns. Just take a wild guess. Uh, I'm an independent. I have a lot of friends who are independent many of whom like your policies, uh, like the fact that you're a deal maker, like the fact that you can end wars, but they are troubled by uh, what happened in the 2020 election and uh, statements about widespread fraud and this kind of stuff, fake elector scheme. What can you say to those uh, independent voters to help them decide who to vote right. for. Right. I think the fraud was on the other side. I think the election was a fraud. And many people felt it was that. And they wanted answers. And when you can't challenge an election, you have to be able to challenge it. Otherwise, it's going to get worse, not better. I'm sure the people concerned about the lies you're spreading about widespread fraud will be convinced after hearing you talk about widespread fraud for the 800th time. Very persuasive, Donald Trump. Thank you so much. You know, even though these lies are demonstrably hurting him, he is incapable of shutting the fuck up about how the 2020 election was stolen from him. But to be fair, he does move on from election fraud relatively quickly and ends up talking about undocumented immigrants for, I kid you not, like almost three minutes. 
just goes on and on and on uninterrupted. Now, Lex Friedman, unsatisfied with that on answer, obviously, he gives him one more chance to try to reach out to people who are turned off by the election denialism. And as you're going to see, it doesn't go any better. So a lot of people believe that there was some shady stuff that went on with the election, whether it's uh, media bias or big tech, but still the, the claim of widespread fraud is the thing that bothers people. Well, I don't focus on the past, I focus on the future. I mean, I talk about how bad the economy is, how bad inflation is, how bad things like, um, which is important. Afghanistan was, in my opinion, the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to our country. And because of that, I think Putin went in. When he said how, how stupid we were, Putin went in. But it, it was the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. I really believe that. So after lying about the last election being stolen again, he then says he doesn't focus on the past because he focuses on the future, only to then talk about the past and bring up how disastrous Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan was. It's almost poetic how fucking stupid and contradictory this man is. And listen, listen I have my criticisms of Biden, but that's not one of them. He actually did what Trump promised to do. He withdrew from Afghanistan. So Trump is reminding all of us that Biden did what he wouldn't do. Not really a smart ploy. Biden wouldn't have had to have withdrawn from Afghanistan if Trump kept his word. Now, as for Lex Friedman, I don't like that he paid lip service to Trump's fraud claims because media bias is not tantamount to election fraud. When you live in a late stage capitalist society, media is going to be biased. It's going to be filtered through a corporate lens. So if you're going to interview a former president who has incited an insurrection literally and was indicted for a conspiracy to overturn the last election, you need to be ready to push back. And Lex did not do that. Now, to be fair, he did ask some good questions that made Trump uncomfortable, but there was no real pushback. Now, another example, Lex asked him about Project 2025, which is good. Now, Trump said the same exact thing that he said every single time. He feigned ignorance. I'm not going to play the clip because you already know what Trump said if you've heard anything about his comments before. So after that, you can't just accept his answer and move on. You need to press him further because he's lying. But Lex did not do that. He needed to follow up. You know, Trump's vice presidential running mate wrote the foreword for the book of the author of Project 2025, who also happens to be the president of the organization leading the effort. Trump also implemented 64% of the Heritage Foundation's policy the last time he was president. So why should we expect him to not do the same thing again when it comes to Project 2025? These are some of the questions that Lex could have asked him to follow up, but he didn't ask follow-up questions and that's really disappointing but with that being said it's not the worst interview i've seen with trump i mean certainly it was a softball to an embarrassing extent but still some of lex's questions did make trump visibly uncomfortable so i mean credit where it's due but if you want to watch the full thing and decide for yourself i'm going to link to it down below but these were the moments that i found to be the most interesting